Welcome to ESR Technologies Introduction to Consequence Assessment, part of our Understanding Major Accident Hazard series. In this video, we'll be looking at what is consequence analysis? To what depth should we analyse consequences? What type of consequence to consider? The types of models we can use? And an example of when appropriate consequence analysis could have predicted the scale of a major accident. If a hazard is realised, it will have consequences. These could be in the near field, far field, immediate or delayed, and the degree of harm will also depend on the target. For instance, a fire may only cause minor injury to people, but destroy a property or habitat, whereas a toxic release may result in fatalities to people in either the short or long term, but have no impact on property or the environment. Harm may also be financial, with a loss of product or capacity, or even to a company's credibility and therefore its ability to operate in a region. Consequences considered within a major accident hazards analysis include jet fires, flash fires, pool fires, explosions, toxic gas releases, and their effects on people and property, as well as on the environment. The depth of analysis required for consequences generally depends on the degree of harm. Initially, a sample or screening model may be used to get an idea of the scale of the consequences and to determine whether detailed analyses will be required. This may take the form of a simple equation or point model. If the simple analysis shows consequences to be far-reaching, or that situ the situation cannot be easily represented by a simple model, then more complex empirical models, computational fluid dynamics, or even semi-technical scale modelling may be required. Scale modelling can then be used to create an empirical model for the consequences to speed up further analysis. Other important factors when choosing the type of model to use for consequence analysis are the number of analyses required and the speed of analysis, which translates into cost, and how accurate the model, along with how easy the model is to set up. Point models are simple, easy to understand, often used for screening, and may be adequate for far field calculations or where large numbers of estimations are required, such as in screening risk assessments. Complex models may add features such as the size, shape and orientation of the hazard and target, along with weather and possible mitigation measures such as being indoors. These are likely to give better estimates of consequences in the near field and are often used for quantified risk assessments as they are relatively easy to set up and fast to run. Examples of these are ESR technologies GASP, DRIFT and EXPEL models. CFD models represent the next level of complexity and are generally applied to specific scenarios which involve complex geometries that may affect vapour dispersion or pressure waves from an explosion. These models are time consuming to set up and require lots of computing resources, so are best suited to scenarios that are of specific concern. Semi-technical models are most often used to understand complex phenomena, which in turn may allow the calibration or validation of point or complex models, thus allowing them to be incorporated in risk assessments. In 1988, there was a leak of about 30 kilograms of condensate on the Piper Alpha platform, which was ignited causing an explosion which ruptured oil lines. This in itself was a major accident, but the subsequent escalation from the initial fires resulted in three further explosions as risers failed, and a total of 167 people lost their lives. The platform had been upgraded to accommodate additional risers, and appropriate consequence analysis of the effects of an explosion on the platform may have been able to predict that such escalation was credible allowing the management to understand the consequences of failures in safety critical procedures. Such an assessment was not performed. Following the inquiry into the accident, regulations were introduced in the UK which required all offshore installations to demonstrate that risks have been evaluated and measures have been, or will be, taken to reduce the risks. ESR technology has been developing training programmes for over 20 years. 
All of our training is delivered by experts based on their operational and regulatory experience. We are able to offer first-hand experience of state-of-the-art tools and techniques at a level to meet your training requirements. Training is available as full course or individual training modules, modular live webinars or on-demand tutorials. For further information, please visit our website www.esrtechnology.com or contact Terry Atkinson using the email address on the screen.